All right, we are live and excited to talk with the Thompson brothers after a grueling three episode matchup with the backcountry team. Um, you know, I, uh, I wanted to start off this segment by saying one thing. Number one, this team showed up with three days notice. That was incredible. I mean, we had that team blow out their shoulders. Uh, that showed their shoulder. They couldn't show up. We pulled the name out of a hat. You guys were there and you showed up and hunted your butts off. And actually, if you've seen the episodes, had a chance to win it. Um, and uh, just a mis miscalculation on yardage. Uh, but, you know, to, to Tyrell's credit, he had the closest shot of, of uh, you know, either matchup that we've done so far. So Kudos to you guys for kind of uh, cranking through it, but um, didn't want to spend a lot of time, but just wanted to kind of recap your guys' matchup with you guys, kind of get your in input on it. So kind of first impressions, now that you've seen all three episodes, give me your first impressions of what you guys did right. I mean, as far as that terrain, I feel like we were all over bucks. Um, and to be able to stay on them the way that we did, I felt like we, we really optimized that very well and, and gave ourselves a chance. Um, you know, I think what you don't see on camera that I watched through the spotting scope is Ty held for almost two minutes. And I mean, anybody that's held a bow for, for that long at full draw, that's brutal. That's and brutal. We, we put ourselves in a chance, like you said, to win it. Um, and, and I think for, uh, for me, like from an emotional standpoint, the things we did right is we always just kept it light and we, uh, we didn't like get down on each other. We didn't ever, you know, have negative tension. We looked at it as a really cool opportunity. Just getting there was winning to us, you know, getting the experience. And so, we just really made it an enjoyable experience with each other. And I feel like that's the approach a lot of these guys should have coming in. You've already won just getting there. Yeah. You know, and, and, and we've never been, we've never been guys that are like killers. You know, there's so many guys in Utah alone that are just that guy that notches a tag every year. And we all know who they are, you know, and, and we've never been those guys. We just love doing it and love going out. And so that was our approach. It was like, we've already won. Let's just go have a really good time. Show these guys that, we can we can compete for sure and i feel like yeah. we put ourselves in those those positions to to do so yeah yeah i, I don't think it was ever <clears throat> a question for us whether or not we were going to find deer or be able to put something together and get opportunities um i think one thing we did well was even though it was a new area for us uh, we hadn't hunted that terrain before or anything <clears throat> um we're familiar behind the glass and behind spot and scopes. And we just stuck to our strengths. Like we stuck to what we know we do well, even though it was a, a, a new area. So I think that would kind of be my, kind of my advice is, I mean, you got to adapt a little bit cause you're, you're in a new place or whatever, but uh, stick to your strengths and what you know has worked for you in the past. Yeah, it's it's funny you say that because you think about, you know, going into a new new setting like that, most guys would get a little frazzled, like we got to adapt, you know, to this terrain and we've got to do our, uh, you know, we got to do what the, this terrain is, is telling us to do. But I actually felt like, you know, being in camp that week with you guys, you never were rattled. You never, I mean, there was even a day or so where you probably didn't find as many bucks. It was, you know, and it, you kind of saw it through the episodes, like those first couple of days, like you were on deer, but you weren't, you weren't seeing giants. Um, you were right. seeing does and small bucks and you just kind of, you know, kept biding your time. And I think that just shows experience in, in kind of hunters, you know, you know, the type of hunters you guys are and that you knew that they would show up and you ended up getting your opportunities it was a little later in the game when you guys actually like got your opportunities, you know? Yeah. We kind of, yeah. we kind of hit our stride day three. I mean, that's when everything started happening for us. I mean, we seen bucks and seen deer before then, uh, you know, actually spotted some bucks that were okay bucks and just didn't go after them just being early in the game and not knowing what was out there. But, uh, 
<clears throat> yeah, we kind of found our groove as the as the week went on, and we were actually getting more stocks as as the hunt kept progressing. Yeah. We, I felt like we were, you know, just kind of finding our niche and learning the country better. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of leading on with that, you know, now season two, we've got some rifle deer hunts, um, elk hunters going archery, you know, you guys were on an archery hunt kind of now being on the show and kind of being in camp and around the cameraman. Um, is there any advice that you would give the next season guys going into it? Like guys that are going to get chosen on June 16th, you know, if you were calling them and they were asking you like, Hey, what, what's a couple things that, that we should really plan on for season two, what would be some tips or, you know, some advice beyond what you've already said? Go ahead. I think aside, yeah, I think aside from just having a good outlook and, and, you know, having gratitude of just even being there. Um, <clears throat> I, I think doing as much research as you can, on on some of the tactics like we're guys and i know i know there's so many people that are guilty of this that are like that looks like the most gnarly secluded terrain no way anybody hunts there we got to go there well there's no deer there right yeah. like yeah do, doing your research you know and and we found out yeah go high glass low because deer aren't high because we're looking at these big mountain ranges and we're like oh we're going to climb to the top because nobody else is going to there's no yep. there's no deer up there you know, so just kind of being adaptive to the area and, you know, it, it's good to play into your strengths. I agree with that, but also, you know, utilizing the resources you have in that, in that terrain, because we found out watering holes are worthless down there. They just yeah. eat, cact eat cactus and graze and just move and they never stop moving. And we had to adapt to that. So just don't get too, too stubborn and set in your ways. Try to adapt yeah. to the terrain. Yeah. That's actually really good. Um, yeah, I, I, I think more, more of the same, just stick to your strengths. Know what you know is good. Um, <clears throat> whatever's working, stick with and just grind with it. Like if you're finding deer, uh, I, for us, it was during the rut. It was the rut hunt. So even on the days we weren't finding bucks, we were finding deer every day and finding does every day. And so we knew it was just a matter of time if we just kept locating deer that eventually we were, the shooter bucks were going to pop up. Um, one other thing I would say too, and this has to do with camp, is uh, make sure we didn't have this problem because we took, cover, took care of it ourselves, but uh, make sure that you bring your own means for coffee. Uh, Troy, <laughs> Troy is not good for, for coffee. He'll buy you Keurig cups. With no coffee pot, no way to, oh, way to brew it. So, hey, bring your, bring your own means for coffee. When, when, you, bring, right when you ask a non coffee drinker to buy you coffee, you get what you get. Like, there is a, that is actually very good advice. And I hope we can actually capture that on the show is, uh, you know, make sure that if you want something specific, you tell me specifically what you want. Don't just say, I mean, hey, any coffee works. <laughs> Well, we I, the, I guess we had coffee the Thompson work. coffee pot. We had the Thompson Thompson coffee house set up and ready to roll. Oh yeah, yeah. You know the other we guys were grinding were beans every day. day. Yeah, you uh, you guys were razzing me all, all <laughs> the whole time in camp. I think I spent like fifty bucks on the wrong type of coffee. So um, well, that well is, when you have Keurig good. pods, you have to have a Keurig machine. Yeah, <laughs> one of those in the wall pen. Yeah, who who would have known? You know, freak. So, um, you know, I uh, th there was so many times during your guys' episodes that I felt like you guys were cool, calm, and collected under pressure. But I also think there were times where you guys were almost coming unhinged. And after you had stalked that buck and got there and got around, I mean, that was a long day to kind of like watch him trot off, you know, what in that moment, did you feel like you were, you know, mm. defeated or did you feel like, Oh, it's just another matter of time. Like I really want to, cause it, cause you, you really were disappointed in the film. Like I felt like we captured that pretty good. Yeah. For, for me, I just, I mean, you don't have going into it. I didn't think that I would get like that perfect 
broadside 40 yard opportunity, especially the terrain we're in. And so to be able to do a four and a half hour stock and have everything go perfect and get in on that buck and just have it go wrong, <clears throat> just, you know, just a, just a bow hunting thing. Uh, it was disappointing for sure. Uh, you know, we did, we, we stayed on that buck. Trevor was great as far as staying on that buck. We got into him. We got close again. We got another in at 90 yards again. <clears throat> and we actually got two, two more opportunities on there that where we stayed on that buck and stocked him again, that wasn't even shown. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were on that buck from da daylight to, you know, from sunset to sunrise, you know, yeah, yeah. We were there. all the daylight, we were just chasing that guy. I don't think me and Will even ate any food that day. We got, we drank <laughs> minimum water. We were just sprinting all over. <clears throat> um, but for me, it wasn't necessarily like crap. I feel like I, like now that was my chance and we're not going to get it done. Like it kind of motivated me more to just be like, all right, we can do this. We've shown now that we can do this. Now let's just go yeah. grind it out and get it done. That's awesome. Um, for, yeah. And for me, for me, I hadn't seen that perspective yet until <clears throat> that episode came out. Yeah. And it, it was obviously heartbreaking for me. Um, but I, I try to approach those situations and I think we do this as a family is I don't want to act a way that I don't want somebody to act if I was in that situation. You know, you kind of seen the tension with the elk hunters in New Mexico, the brothers, yeah. you know, getting, and for me, it was like, if I'm, I'm taking the walk of shame back to the truck, the last thing I want to be greeted with is time out of me. Right. <laughs> so I was just like, Hey, we're good. We're going to, we're going to do it. We, we just did it no problem. And, you know, we, we put more stocks on, you know, after yeah. that. And so I think, you know, looking at it, I, I never felt like this impending doom, but my heart was just crushed. Like yeah. I was so heartbroken and a little backstory a few months before that, our dad missed like a 202 inch buck, um, kind of the same situation where, didn't really have time to range felt good about the shot and and missed the exact same way so i was like is this deja vu like are we Jeez. cursed and i just felt just heartbroken and then you're you're, you're gonna be on tv missing yeah. for everybody to watch yeah but over overall i don't think we ever did lose composure we were just we were just pretty broken hearted <laughs> yeah well i mean and kind of to you know kind of finish this out and round it out i I can't, uh, it's kind of hard to depict how fun we actually had in camp and the laughs and oh. the jokes. And I mean, it was an absolute blast um, just having you guys there and, you know, making the connections on, hey, we know this guy, you know, this guy, like it was just such a cool camaraderie in camp. And, and that was one thing that I really felt like stood out with your guys' matchup was just, you know, the absolute fun, just being there. And that's what kind of, you know, the number one goal for us is in Hunt Wars is to just have a, a life-changing fun experience that you'll never forget and have it videoed, you know, have that now that you can show your kids uh, for, for day, you know, for years and years to come. So that was kind of my synopsis and overall feel of having you guys down there, the ultimate competitors, the ultimate, like, you know, grind as hard as we possibly can good sports you know it was crazy the way i i felt like the way that we we you know finished that thing off it was awesome like it was just it really yeah. captured the whole hunt perfectly and there were even opportunities that we couldn't we couldn't you know, you know slide in there that you guys had and and that's yeah. that's ultimately what we wanted was ultimate you know a, a bunch of opportunities and guys being on awesome deer and I felt like both teams actually had their chances. They did. They had their your, your oh, chances, yeah. and that was cool. That was really cool. Yeah, and I think just to kind of piggyback on that, I, I know that it's competitive. I know it's us versus this team, and and we want to win. Everybody wants to win in those situations. That's just the nature of, of guys like us. But I think it was cooler because I know you separated hunters in the in the previous episodes. I think it was yeah. cooler sharing sharing a camp, and it's not that you have to sit there and swap information. Yeah, but like I feel like with Dave and Zach, like we 
we kind of bonded and it was a really cool yeah. experience for us to go back and get to know them and it made camp fun and light. And that's, to me, that was a cool experience. Yeah. Yeah. That just, that just added to the whole thing for me. Like we didn't know if they were going to be cool or not, or if we were going to hate them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, but just, uh, just having the sharing camp and being able to get back to camp and kind of share stories. Like it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, being able to see and watch the episodes and see Zach's uh, perspective and Zach's hunt of it. Cause we, I mean, we had no idea other than just right, right. stories. So actually watching it from that side of it was really cool for me. Um, and then I'll, just being able to go back to camp. I mean, it kind of felt like just a, you know, a, a big group of friends out on a hunt when you're right. there after after you've hunted for the day, you you know, you tell a few stories and then you get telling stories about past hunts and making jokes and, you know, I yeah, think it, it, it was just great sharing camp. It was. Well, love you guys to death. Um, super grateful that you guys, you know, on a, on a moment's notice turned and, and did that um, and came down and gave it everything you had um man i you know i love those episodes those those mule deer episodes were so cool watching you guys out there uh the best part was the all the choya that you guys got stuck in your calves your legs your butts like i mean my kids they were dying at that part i mean at one point, I think both of you, you had one stuck in your Achilles and you had one stuck in your butt and you were side by side. I was, my kids were just dying. So if Honestly, anything, it was dude, entertaining. They, it didn't even show half of the choya. <laughs> oh, no. There was, it was so all bad. day, every day. Those were just some of the choice choyas, but. Yeah, it was brutal. Those were the PG. Those were the PG reactions. Yeah, those were the ones you guys could actually show. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for hopping on and talking about it. Um, the Thompson brothers, like you couldn't get better. Uh, you know, we will uh, we will continue to have uh, these kind of breakdowns after the the hunts are over and kind of talk to each team. So thank you for your guys' perspective. Yeah, thank for you. sure. Thanks, Troy. Okay, well, we are live. We're here with the uh, Hunt Wars matchup. Uh, I guess the fourth matchup we could probably call it, but it's actually the second matchup of the Hunt Wars um, season one winners. We got the backcountry team, and uh, we've got David and Zach on. Um, I'm, I'm pretty new at this. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever have our own podcast, but I wanted to kind of, you know, every, every matchup we want to try to re rehash out a few of the cool things that happened during the matchup. So I'm glad you guys could hop on and talk to me about it. Um, kind of give me number one, you know, your overall just feel of the matchup. Like, what did you guys think watching it and replaying it now? Kind of, how did you guys feel about it? Um, yeah, it, it was cool to, re, to, to watch it. I mean, obviously the whole time, if you've never been filmed on a hunt, it's, you know, it's a little different. Uh, I've been around it, so I was kind of used to it, but you, you know, you kind of got a camera in your face at all times. So it's, there's kind of a learning curve. And then also you have a cameraman with you on a stock, which is also a learning curve. You know, because you're not just trying to conceal yourself or just you stay quiet. It's got to be your cameraman, too. But, no, it uh, it was cool to rewatch it. And, you, you know, you forget stuff. You remember a lot of stuff from a hunt, but there's stuff you forget. And you'll never remember it unless you have the film. So it was really cool to, you know, see it and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Or I don't even remember that. So, yeah, you know, I, I enjoyed watching it back. And it just reminded me of, like, how much fun that I had on it. Yeah, that's cool. What about you, David? What were a few things that like kind of highlights that you, you know, overall rewatching it, you, you felt like you, you know, didn't remember like, like Zach was saying. Well, I, I feel like I said some mildly inappropriate things. Uh, I feel like I said some hilarious things and also some very dumb things and I may have done some dumb things, but overall it was a blast to rewatch it and kind of relive it. It was, 
it was just so much fun and to have it all on video and kind of live in perpetuity that's it's super cool it's invaluable to have it was such an awesome experience and it's nice to have it on video and cut yeah. so well so the one thing that actually stood out to me was how your excitement after zach arrowed that buck on the last <laughs> you know five minutes that, that was like that was so freaking cool and you guys were such a good team all week long. It was just so fun to watch you guys work together. But, you know, that moment of you just freaking out, well, that was uh, like probably one of my favorite parts of the whole film was that, watching you kind of really, you know, be excited for, for Zach shooting that buck. So um, now going into season two, we've got 12 teams coming out to compete. I want, to under, I want you guys to talk a little bit about what you felt like you could have done better. So what could you have done better in season, you know, in your matchup to kind of give advice to guys coming into season two? Well, I mean, for our hunt, what stands out and what would have changed the whole hunt is because we could use radios on that hunt. <laughs> if we would have bought better radios in the beginning, instead of using the cheapest radios we already had, that it would have changed everything. For sure, we would have killed the buck day one or day two. Yeah. But that killed us. I mean, that killed us on our hunt. And on that yeah. hunt, so important to have radios. Yeah. Like, that's probably, that was, that's actually a really good point. That was like the, we should have, and we talked about it too, and we didn't do it, just buying better radios. Yeah. And that, like for us, without a doubt, that was like the number one thing. If I could go back and, and redo it, that's what I would have done because that was legal. So stuff yeah. like that just knowing what you're hunting and, you know, cause you know, on the show, if you're selected, you know, what hunt you're going to go on. You might yep. not know the, area, you know, the state and in the hunt, you know, if it's archery elk, whatever it is, rifle deer, like do your due diligence, read the laws and regulations and, and prepare yourself accordingly. Yeah. Cool. Dave, what about so, you? I agreed 100%. The, the, the radio's, were a disaster and we like zach said we had talked about buying this really nice set of radios never got to it um but another thing for me is like especially on like bow hunts um and especially public land bow hunts take take the gifts that are given to you like that's what i would say is like everybody wants to kill the biggest animal in the world and great it's a point system fact is is Hardly anybody killed him. Right. So like, if you have a gift, take the gift. Because bottom line is, I mean, and if someone beats you, they beat you. Great. But at least right. you gave your best effort and you took something down and, and you were in the game. So that's, right. that would be my big advice. Is, yeah. so, what if it's a, so what if it's like a five by five, you know, a 250 inch five by five, you have something on the board. And maybe yeah. you don't do that day one, but, you know, I would seriously start considering it later on. Especially, yeah. especially, I was going to say the same thing, especially for any bow hunts. Yeah. Because bow hunting is bow hunting, period. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, but it, you know, it's the same thing with anything. You go on a guided hunt, you know, you paid the money. It's like, do you want to shoot this animal? But like for this, for the competition's sake, especially a bow hunt, rifle hunt, you know, you could, you could kind of, you see how it goes maybe in the first couple of days, but it's, it's hunting. Yeah. So that's like the fun aspect of it and what we were excited for. Um, honestly though, after it's all said and done, there were certain bucks we didn't go after and I wouldn't have changed how it worked out. Yeah. They right. were bigger than what I killed, but how it all worked out. Like, you know, like I said before, the competitor in me wanted to win, but also I want to shoot a mature animal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You it's know? funny because you look at the statistics of, of bow hunting, especially, and like, it's like that hunt's probably less than 10%. I'm sure that is a, you know, it, it, it's like you think about one out of 10 guys and then you have two teams there with one tag. Like it's being on the board with a score definitely proved to be really important in season one. I think guys, you know, overlooked that fact. And it was funny to watch as the hunt progressed guys going from, Oh, I want to shoot this to all of a sudden, like, Hey, I just want to be on the board, you know? Yeah. And, 
And if guys kind of maybe had that mentality going into it, I mean, it, it, you do want to shoot the most mature animal. So I totally get that. So the, uh, what, what do you feel like uh, advice overall and experience overall for hunt wars season one, you know, going into season two, we've got antelope hunts that are rifle hunts, archery elk hunts. We've got rifle deer hunts and then a duck hunt. You know, what would you give number one, you know, advice? Like you said, I loved know your area, know the regulations, know what you can use. Is there anything above and beyond that? Um, I loved what Dave said with, you know, get on the board early. Don't, don't think that like you can get it done in the last day or so, because sometimes it doesn't work out. Kind of give me any advice that you guys would have for season two guys beyond what you've already said right now. Yeah. My advice would just be enjoy it. Like it's just a different experience. It, it's so just like live in the moment. We, uh, I think we did that where, you know, that's what was our mindset going in and we did it and we had a blast. Like, honestly, it was one of the funnest hunting camps I've ever been in. Yeah. Like the company was good. You know, we, we actually really liked our opponents you know, the Thompson brothers were awesome. So just sharing stories and stuff. Um, it, uh, camp, the, the, the cameraman, like everything about it. We just, we, we had, we had a lot of fun. I mean, you could tell in our episodes, like, yeah, it, it, we were laughing. I mean, obviously we were hunting hard seriously, but there's no, there's not a reason you can't be laughing your butt off the whole time. And, and that's really what we were doing. And we, that, that was, that was the funnest hunt I did last year for sure <laughs> it was it was a blast and i i'm glad that you said that like enjoying the experience is really important to us dave what what would you say i would say yes have fun but you know work hard like and you're there you know you're there for for a reason but you know have fun work hard those two can go together and don't get complacent you know it's like sure you might have seven days or six days but they go by so they do just, just work your butt off and, and get it done. Yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, to wrap this up, man, uh, watching you guys win that in the last little bit. And then, you know, my favorite part was how uh, it was captured at the end of us around the fire, the, the Thompson brothers, you know, I wish we could have captured a little bit more of them preparing mentally for a shootout and then being absolutely <laughs> shocked. <laughs> when they found you out that you guys in their face with. in the video <laughs> it was it was priceless to see that so that was you know and it was funny that wasn't scripted like we didn't i got back to camp and you like you you barely shared with me that hey we shot one like it wasn't really it was it, i wanted it to be genuine and i i felt like it was so cool to have that recap and then the guys you know not knowing that that you guys had shot one so um, in perfect fashion. That was awesome. And I really do appreciate you guys hopping on and just doing this little recap for us. Um, this week obviously is a down week until we start the next elk matchup. And so we wanted to kind of circle back with you guys. We'll also do the same with the Thompson brothers and, uh, and just kind of talk through their thoughts about the hunt and, and, and kind of their side of the story. But I really appreciate you two hopping on with me. Yeah, man. We uh we had a blast, so we're ready for season three. Yeah, let's get going. <laughs> we're ready for the winter. Season. Ready yeah. for the winter circle. Let's get it done. Like a like a I don't know a manti or you know some sort of four hundred inch class bull hunt. You know that'd be great. <laughs> I don't or know how much that costs. Crazy. But... Yeah, something, <laughs> something crazy. crazy. Go to Australia and we try to shoot the barnyard slam, as I call it. <laughs> <laughs> now. A sheep, a goat, and a horse. That sounds amazing.